Hi, my name is Alana Gregory, and I'm the founder and CEO of Viv. Viv is on a mission to help women look and feel their best every single day, and help salons and stylists grow and serve their customer bases. We do this through an on-demand mobile booking platform. So I went to Princeton and I studied math, and like all good math nerds, I went to Wall Street after school. So this is me <laughs> on Wall Street at my desk, circa spring 2013. My hair is a complete mess, and my Excel model has just crashed. <laughs> and as I'm sure many professional women can empathize, my time was not my own. I am a self-professed beauty junkie, and beauty, booking beauty appointments was a drag. There are many variables that go into finding the right salon. First, there's location. For me, that meant near my office or my home, or maybe a social event that I had that evening. Then there's quality. I would check Google reviews, Yelp reviews, New York Magazine, or maybe ask a friend. Then there's price. A blowout can cost anywhere from forty to sixty-five dollars, and with, if you have curly hair like me, that really adds up. Then there's time. I had a very narrow window in which I could book my beauty appointments, and after all that filtering for, through all those variables, if I was actually able to land an appointment. I would still run the risk of looking like a poodle after my blowout. So, our desire to look good drives a very large industry. Hair and nail services alone in the United States is a 58 billion dollar industry, and our spend on these services grows 12 percent year over year. Our target demographic, women between the ages of 25 and 44, spend anywhere between 100 and 300 dollars per month on these services. So I started Viv to streamline this process. Our members pay a, pay a fat monthly rate, currently $99 per month, to access unlimited blowouts at New York City's top salons. Switch the demo. So this is how I would use Viv. Let's say I want to book a blowout tonight near my apartment. The first thing I would do is enter a location, 250 West 19th Street. Then I'd enter the date. Today, I can book today or up to three days in advance. Then I'd enter the time, 6 p.m. I can book with as little as 30 minutes' notice. Then I hit request. Switch back to the slides. When I hit request, Viv uses location-based technology to check nearby salons for real-time availability. Once a salon accepts my appointment. Viv sends the confirmation to the salon, and then back to the consumer. Back to the slides. Great. So, as you can see, Viv is now checking my appointment, and it'll soon send me a text message confirmation of where I'm going. Back to the back to the slides. Because we're a marketplace. And because we wanted to optimize for a perfect customer experience with a very limited supply, which we've grown from 26 salons to now over 70, we had a very limited and closed beta, but nonetheless had very promising results. Our average customers experienced a 4.3 percent customer rating, and 88 percent of all appointments were filled on their first request. Our salons were happy as well. We were filling seats that had not been filled before, and our stylists were able to upsell these. New These new clients, and were able to sell retail product and also new services. In our four-month beta, we saw 94% salon retention, and 83% of these、uh, new salons received at least one booking within their first week of using Viv. Of course, we have ambitions beyond blowouts and beyond New York City. We know Viv will work in major metro areas in across the United States. And internationally, and also in service categories that women use on a frequent basis. We also have ambitions beyond lead generation for salons. Once we've embedded ourselves in the, eco in the salon ecosystem, and we'll provide valuable software for both、uh, customer management and e-commerce and content solutions. We are currently on a waitlist model, and have grown our waitlist、uh, from. Uh, we have doubled our waitlist over the past two months, and is now at 5,000 in New York City alone. We're happy to announce that we'll be letting people off our waitlist starting today. So please sign up at www.viv.co for unlimited blowouts and make every day a great hair day. Thank you.
All right. <laughs> Judges, do you want to jump in? Go ahead. So I wasn't quite clear. How, how are the salons actually interacting? How are they receiving the booking requests, and what are they using to actually f find out their availabilities and other things? Sure. So right now, they're using our own system and getting availabilities in real time. So we are uh, using our own proprietary software solution that they have used, that they're using. And well, first off, great job. Oh, um, thanks. I can't wait to get off the wait list. Um, can you explain a little bit how the economics work for the salon? Sure. So we uh, work with our salons to uh, find an agreed upon rate that's beneficial to both Vive and to the salon. Uh, typically, that is anywhere between a 30 and a 40 percent discount, and we pay a salon for, for every blowout that they provide. So can I just follow up on that? Um, $99 a month. Sure. Do you know yet what the average uh, number of times that someone books will be? at this point based on, on uh, your beta? Sure, so right now we are profitable, uh, though it is you know, a closed beta and we're looking at, you know, uh, as consumer patterns you know, shift and change, it is very early, but we are profitable right now and you know, we are monitoring those behavior patterns. But just, that's, that's actually not my question. My question is really how you think about the unit economics of this, right? So you're getting $99 mm -hmm. a month from a consumer and let's say they book six times a month, Sure, that comes out to X, and then right. what goes to the salon, what comes back to you as profit? Sure, so right now we are profitable, and the amount we pay a salon depends, and we have a, ver like a variety of salons, uh, so the amount we pay per salon, there, you know, we have a target rate that we do pay, and in terms of the understanding of the distribution of how we pay or the distribution of consumer bookings that is shifting and it is a little too early to say what that distribution looks like and it has changed. Mm -hmm. So it is a little too early to say uh, what it exactly looks like. Right now we are profitable at that price point, though we are open to changing it and as we grow our customer base, we'll continue to learn more. So are you profitable? No, I'm we just are. kidding. <laughs> well, um, uh, uh, so sorry, because I would honestly go every day if I could. Um, do you have limits Can on? Can you get a blowout every day? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, would you have limits? Because then I, you would lose money on me. You would no longer be profitable yeah. if I you would lose money on me. Too. Yeah. So uh, we do not. Have, I mean, we have we limit it to one blowout per day. We have not seen that behavior from consumers yet. Because we're not we're not in there yet. <laughs> yeah. You're not getting off the wait list now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, have, we, actually, we have not seen that behavior yet. I mean, okay. to, be, to be fully transparent, I think it would actually be bad for your hair. <laughs> so I think uh, we do see some enthusiasm around what users are, are doing and how they behave. Uh, but no, we haven't seen you haven't absolutely seen dramatic uh, behavior yeah. patterns to the point where they're causing us to, you know, drastically. What do you, what do you think the average woman does spend on a month in blowouts? Like, what is, what is the behavior? I think there is behavior of, you know, pre-Vive and then post-Vive. Um, so I think w women typically would get anywhere between one to two blowouts a month, but they have the desire to maybe get a blowout a week. I see. Al Alana, how do you see the, some of the larger blowout chains responding to uh, subscription offering? <coughs> So I, I'm sure you're hinting at like dry bar. Or, uh, I think that um, I think it depends on how you. I mean, I would love to have them as a client. <laughs> Let's just start there. Um, but uh, you know, I think they've created you know they they're they've created a great product that really enhances our model. Um, they've obviously proven the demand for, for blowouts and uh, that it's a great product that women want and that there's an appetite for. Of course, uh, the great thing about Vive is that there are many locations mm -hmm. and no matter how many chains there are in any city, uh, they, they obviously there are a limited number that they can open up in any city, but Vive can leverage a great network of many salons. Mm -hmm. So I would probably think about it in that way. So I keep going back to, to the value proposition for the salon, mm -hmm. and um, I did see on your site that one of the things that 
you think you can help drive is the sale of more beauty products in salons, which is a good thing for them. Mm -hmm. um, and that you could see this being a way for them to train new employees to give them a chance to uh, blow out somebody's hair, um, which also seems like a reasonable value proposition for them. There's obviously going to be a challenge there between what the consumer experience is and what the, the value proposition is for the salon owner. Can you talk a little bit about how you see that? The value proposition for the salon owner and for the stylist? Or? Well, the, the value proposition uh, for the salon, which might be to put their most junior person on this to give them experience, mm -hmm. right, for people who are coming in sure. with the pass, and the customer experience, which might not be great under a circumstance like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a, that's actually a great question. And uh, so a lot of people who, who come out of beauty school are actually incredibly skilled at styling. Yeah. So they, even if you might get a junior stylist who is doing your blowout, they might actually be the best person to do that blowout because they might even be even more skilled to do a blowout than a senior stylist because the senior stylist might actually be much better at cut and color. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a great opportunity that for them to showcase their skills because they might be even potentially more skilled and more practiced. So you, even though you know, they might be paid less and might be less skilled overall, they'll have a really great skill set for that particular skill. Mm -hmm. what, so, what's the typical response time now between somebody requesting a booking and actually getting conf confirmation? No more than 15 minutes. Cool. And unfortunately, we're out of time. You did a great job. That was Vive. Thank you very much. Give it up.